Sponsor, Israeli government spokesman, a short update from me and then to your questions. It's Monday, the 8th of July, day 276 of the October 7th war. Firstly, our hostages. Hamas still holds 120 hostages. These hostages, men, women and children, the elderly from 24 nations are enduring horrific abuse for nine months now. Last week, I reminded you about Yusuf al-Zidane, 53, and his son Hamza, age 22, Israeli Bedouin Muslims taken hostage nine months ago. Today, I want to remind you that Romi Gonen, aged only 23, is also still there. She's sweet-natured. Her family call her funny, a talented dancer and choreographer and a medic and a guide for the scouts. Look at her, please. Say her name. Romi Gonen, 276, 276 days now. Israel will not rest until all 120 are brought home. Hamas are eliminated together with their terrorist threat to Israel, and we will return our residents securely to their homes in the south and in the north. Now to sad news of IDF's casualty, 680 since the start of the war. Major in the reserves, Itai Galea was 38 years old, and from Ramat Gan, he fell fighting in the north of Israel. Staff Sergeant Eyal Mimran was only 20 years old and from Nestiona. He was killed in battle in northern Gaza. And Major Jala Ibrahim was 25 years old from the Druze village of Sajur. He fell in battle in the south of Gaza. There are no words of mine that can assuage the pain of their parents and their families. We embrace them and those dear families who have lost their precious heroes, sons and daughters in this war for our very existence. The price of war is heavy and painful. Each casualty is a world unto itself. May their memories be a blessing forever. Now to the Israeli position on hostage negotiations. Israel's steadfast position against the attempt to halt IDF action in Rafah has led Hamas to enter negotiations. To be clear, on the current position, the Prime Minister is continuing to insist on the principles that have already been agreed by Israel. Firstly, any deal will allow Israel to resume fighting until all of our objectives of the war have been achieved. Secondly, that there will be no smuggling of weapons to Hamas from Egypt to the Gaza border. Thirdly, that there will be no return of thousands of armed terrorists to the northern Gaza Strip. And fourthly, Israel will maximize the number of living hostages who will be released from Hamas captivity. This plan has been uh, agreed by Israel, uh, which has been welcomed by President Biden, uh, which will allow uh, Israelis to uh, Israel to return hostages without infringing on other on the other objectives of the war. To the north now and our border with Lebanon and Syria. 6,700 rockets from Hezbollah. 6,700 rockets. 177,000 dunams of land burnt. It is becoming ever more clear that Hezbollah only responds to force. Even if Israel reaches an agreement in Gaza, uh, a deal we want to bring our hostages home, Israel will continue fighting Hezbollah until we bring Hezbollah to reach an agreement and ensure the safe return of Israel's northern communities to their homes. A hostage deal does not bind us in the north unless Hezbollah reaches an agreement. So. A hostage release peace pause in the south does not change that we will defend ourselves from Iran's aggression and bring our Israeli communities home safely. In terms of an update, update, I can tell you that Hezbollah and Palestinian terrorists have lost 450 terrorists. 450 terrorists. 15 brigade commanders and above eliminated, including three divisional commanders. In fact, more than 50% of Hezbollah's commanders in southern Lebanon have been eliminated. Hezbollah's capabilities are being 
eroded. Now to COGAT and an update on their work coordinating aid into Gaza over the last 24 hours. Yesterday, 272 trucks carrying humanitarian goods went in, 238 via Kerem Shalom and 34 via the Eris crossing. Six tankers of fuel and four, uh, four tankers of cooking gas also went in for vital infrastructure. We will continue to expand our efforts to facilitate humanita humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. 80% more food goes in than before the war. 38,800 trucks delivering more than 735,000 tons of aid have gone in. More than enough food to feed everyone there. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now uh, happily take your questions, which you should put in the chat, uh, together with your news outlet. Okay, uh, first question here is from uh, Joel Pollock at Breitbart News, uh, and it's two questions I can see. Is there a sense in Israel that the public is exhausted from war and therefore willing to compromise? Uh, thank you for that question, Joel. Uh, I can certainly confirm that we are exhausted with uh, Hamas's deadly aggression with us, but nothing will stop us, nothing will slow us down, nothing will keep us away from our objective to destroy this terrorist organization. Our armed forces are determined, they are uh, expert, they are um, determined, uh, they are having great results taking out hostages, uh, taking out uh, the uh, terrorists and also finding our hostages and leaving no more room for maneuver for Hamas to do anything but then to return to the negotiating table to try and agree a hostage release pause. We need to get our people out, but there is utter determination in this country, utter determination to bring our people home and to achieve all of our uh, war objectives. Uh, the second part of your question, uh, why do so many Israelis in opposition seem to blame the government for the lack of a hostage deal when even uh, the Biden adm administration uh, blames uh, Hamas? Um, thank you for that question, Joel. Uh, I was taught very, very early on that it's the opposition's job to oppose, and that's what they do, and that's what they're free to do in every uh, single democracy. It is, of course, Hamas that holds our hostages. This war could be, o be over this afternoon by the time we put our children uh, in bed if Hamas lay down their arms and release our hostages. It would be over right now. The people holding the hostages are Hamas. That's why they need to be defeated. Um, next question from uh, Leo uh, Soroka from the Washington Post. Does the PMO have an estimate on how many Israeli homes near the northern border have been damaged as a result of the fire uh, from Lebanon? About a quarter of homes in Matul have been affected, according to the spokesman, uh, spokesperson um, for the community. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Leo. Uh, I can uh, share with you uh, some of that information uh, that uh, I received uh, yesterday, and um, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll happily uh, send that to you to share that sort of information. I did mention to you the numbers of um, land which has been burnt, 177,500 dunams of land which has been affected uh, and burnt, nature reserves, uh, green land, forests, uh, our northern communities, uh, and also the number of rockets, uh, more than 6,700 uh, 6, uh, rockets from Hezbollah. So this menace needs to be stood up to one way or another, diplomatically or militarily, this menace will be stood up to. This country will be defended. No other country on earth, no other country on earth would accept 6,700 rockets falling down uh, on our land. Uh, Hezbollah are on notice. They know our capabilities and we know their capabilities as well, which means that uh, one way or another they will be pushed back. Um, thank you for that question. Next question we've got here is from uh, uh, Jim Williams from Zenga. Uh, reports have emerged over the weekend suggesting that the far-right uh, party might obstruct a hostage deal if it fails to align with their criteria. Is it fair to say uh, if, the Prime Minister, if Prime Minister Netanyahu believes there is a viable deal, he will proceed with it uh, regardless of the political fallout? Uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, Jim. Um, 
the Prime Minister is, has laid out our war aims. They are uh, crystal clear. They are firstly to destroy uh, Hamas, its military and governing capabilities, to return all of our hostages and to ensure that Gaza never again uh, poses a threat to us. Those are our war aims. Uh, we believe that the uh, deal, the negotiation uh, that we have shared with uh, President Biden, uh, which we are trying to negotiate now, we believe um, in, a, in the absence of Hamas doing the decent thing, which is, of course, uh, a contradiction in terms, uh, but in the absence of them doing the decent thing, there is a decent deal on the table. Everyone says there is a decent deal on the table. The Egyptians, the Qataris, the US, uh, it is time for um, Hamas uh, to take the deal. Um, and uh, that is, our, we've made our objectives clear. And in terms of other political questions, I'll leave that for others to deal with. Um, next question, uh, so thank you, Jim, for that. Next question is from Hannah Julian at the Jewish Press. Can you clarify the meaning of the statement that Israel will maximize the number of living hostages to be returned? Does this mean not all living hostages will be returned uh, in this deal? Thank you for that question, uh, Hannah. I'm reticent to go into the specifics um, of the deal. Uh, there are lo there's lots of commentary out there. Uh, this is a um, uh, very sensitive uh, negotiations, uh, as you know, Hannah, and you've heard me say here before. Lives literally hang in the banner, uh, hang in the balance again and again. It's been Hamas that have walked away from a deal, uh, but we want uh, this deal to succeed. Uh, uh, which is why the, um, all parties are trying to uh, push for it. Um, in terms of, I've seen reports, uh, and I, I think that I, I, would I would refer you to those reports. I don't want to, uh, about uh, the, the terms of the deal. I shared with you some of our criteria uh, earlier, um, and um, that's as much as I'm gonna say on this uh, subject. Okay, are there any other questions? No. Uh, yeah, there's another question here from uh, Fred Eger. Um, and Victor Lieberman calls on French Jews to move uh, to Israel after the election result. No time to lose, he says. Does Israel's government also say that after the risk of having um, the LFI, uh, which you've translated as Rebellious France, to be a, a part of the coalition uh, government uh, for French Jews to make Aliyah? Do you believe uh, French Jews are in more danger than uh, before these elections. Uh, thank you for that question, Fred. Uh, it is, of course, for the French people and for the French government to choose uh, their own government. Uh, they uh, had their second round of elections uh, yesterday, uh, and we'll leave it uh, at that. We have, of course, seen many reports um, of um, anxiety amongst uh, France's Jewish community, which numbers uh, at least a half a million. Um, and um, I'll leave it at that. Um, so, uh, next question from David Clement from the News Forum. Last Thursday you mentioned that today you would have an updated uh, casualty figures. Were you able to obtain those? Um, thank you very much uh, for that question, uh, David. Uh, our current estimates there are, uh, when we're talking about the number of terrorists we have eliminated in uh, Gaza, we're talking about approximately, approximately 14,000 uh, number of terrorists that we have eliminated uh, in Gaza. Um, that was the current update I received this morning from the IDF. Uh, on the second question, it's been reported that Hamas has given up its demand that Israel end the war entirely. Entirely, Is that accurate? And if they uh, have, does that expedite, expedite the possibility of a ceasefire? Um, thank you for that question, uh, David. Uh, in my earlier comments, I made a, a fairly comprehensive statement regarding our position on this hostage release pause. We want to get our people out. Uh, all of them, all 120, uh, the live ones to be uh, reju to be rejuvenated and to uh, go back uh, to their friends and family. 
and also for the uh, the dead ones who unfortunately been killed by Hamas uh, to have at least a decent burial uh, here uh, in Israel and to be reunited with their family and for their families to get uh, some sort of sort of closure for this unbelievable um, shocking ordeal which they have gone through I don't want to give any more uh, than that uh, uh, lives literally hang in the balance uh, I've made our position clear the Prime Minister has dispatched um, his uh, negotiation negotiations team to uh, further negotiations all of us want this to succeed uh, all of us want to bring our poor host our, our hostages uh, home uh, question here from Jody Cohen at World is One News in India. Netanyahu suggested that the fighting in Gaza would be over very soon, but local Gazans in Gaza City are suggesting the fighting is more intensive than previously uh, in the war. When can we expect to move towards the next phase uh, in the war? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, Jody. We've uh, made quite clear that we have smashed uh, most of the battalions of um, of, uh, Ga of Hamas uh, in Gaza. Uh, we have smashed them as a, um, uh, a fighting force that is able to coordinate their activities. But we do know, of course, that uh, many individuals uh, from Hamas are regrouping in other areas. Uh, you gave an example of some activity which has happened uh, in Gaza City today. Uh, the IDF did release uh, information about that. Uh, it has encouraged um, Gazans there to uh, civilians to move out of harm's way while we uh, take out those uh, those terrorist uh, forces. Uh, we will do the job for as long as it needs to be done. Um, we've made our war aims extremely clear. Uh, the Prime Minister has also been very clear about uh, us destroying this organization, uh, this terrorist army. Uh, we will not allow them to stand to stay on their feet to be able to be able to carry out another. October the 7th again and again. We simply will not allow that to happen. Okay, uh, was there one more question at the top? Can you just scroll to the top for a second? And no, I think we've dealt with um, all the questions. Okay, so that was the last question, my friends. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please do stay safe and please join us for another briefing tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.